All right, what's on the bench? It's a Keith Lee, the fancy K, uh, 261. Now this is the uh, Pico ammeter source that I thought I was buying last time. <laughs> and I must have been half asleep when I bought that thing, but it, it's kind of a high current, high voltage thing. This is kind of a low voltage, low current thing. And this is what I expected to get last time. And it's nice and light. Um, the other one's super, super heavy. So anyway, this is what I, this is what I wanted and I, and I, and I finally found one. So, uh, yeah, so it goes from 10 to the minus five pico, am, uh, pico am, amps, 10 to the minus five amps. So here's 10 to the minus six. That's a, a, a micro amp, right? 10 to the minus nine. That's a nano amp. 10 to the minus 12, that's a picoamp. So it goes to, it has picoamp full scale. So yeah, point, so 0 0.01 picoamp. So that's the one. It'll do uh, positive polarity, negative polarity. It just swaps the two. Um, and it has a decimal place here, which is nice. It has a funny connector on the front. I didn't quite expect that. It has a PL259 type of connector. So um, yeah, uh, each knob goes to 10. Too bad they don't go to 11, but oh, that one only goes to 9. This one goes to 10, and this one goes to 10. Hmm, okay, whatever. Uh, and the back, uh, the back just has uh, one funny business here, which is ground and common. So you have an earth ground and a, and a ground ground. Um, and I'm not sure, because the connector here in the front is obviously chassis ground as well, so I'm not sure what that what that thing does. I'll need to figure it out someday. But let's uh, let's turn it on for, don't take it apart, let's turn it on, see if it works. So we are going to be using uh, this thing here. Let's turn him on. Uh, he is my Keith Lee, oops. He's my Keith Lee uh, 487 Pico ammeter. Very, very nice. There's zero check. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and zero him. Okay, and uh, let's see. Take this off. That's how many nanoamps. Point zero zero zero. Yeah, it's a lot of not many nanoamps. So we will come back over here, and uh, I've put on a couple adapters. I have a uh, PL259 to uh, BNC and then a BNC to try NC and uh, we will put that on here. Oh, we can measure things. All right, let's put it at one, one microamp. One microamp, let's turn it on and uh, we get a decimal place, so 1.00. Yeah, what do we got? Ooh, 0.98. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's put it on negative. Pretty close. Okay. Yeah, it's got some kind of offset -y thing going on. Probably warming up. Uh, well, let's just leave it over here. Let's leave it over here and I'll do some other things. Let's go to uh, one next range down. This should be 0.1, okay, 100 nanoamps. And then uh, 10 nanoamps, yeah. And then one nanoamp, eh, not quite. 0.1 nanoamps, 0.01 nanoamps, yeah, it's not right. And then here's one picoamp, yeah, that ain't one picoamp. So at the high range though, here at uh, one, here's 10. Uh, okay, it's catching up. Yeah, and then we can go all the way to 100. Oh, look at that. Not so bad. So it's not so bad. It definitely needs calibration, but um, it does seem to be in working order uh, for the most part. I say it's okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and open it up. I'm curious to see inside. I don't think there's going to be much inside except some resistors which is what I expected last time when then I was saw all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, let's go ahead and unplug it. Unfortunately, it has a, a 
built-in uh, built-in power cord. I might put a socket there. Uh, we'll see. And uh, there are some holes in the back. That's interesting. I don't know why those are there. Maybe there's some bumpers that used to be on there. But uh, yeah, let's take the take the cover off. Oh, there we go. It's nice and neat inside. Um, definitely, definitely, this is what I expected. There's a tiny, tiny little transformer, and then a whole bunch of really nice resistors. And then look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is really, really pretty. I like this. Um, so there's a range calibration. So every single range, negative six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then minus five is down here. And then there's a Cal and operate switch. That's really cool. I have never seen something like that before. So pretty nice. And then, uh, and then inside here, I don't know, there's probably electronics in here that uh, is shielded. It's got this nice big can here. And yeah, looks really nice. Now this is the only circuitry I think uh, that does most of this stuff. Um, let's see if I can, some caps here that probably could, could do with some replacing. From Taiwan, where's my, uh, where's my magnifier? All right, let me read the top of this 1985. Uh, any other markings? I don't know, that says 1985 and I kind of believe it's kind of that vintage. Yeah, so I say we need to uh, read the manual and then start twiddling some knobs here, maybe clean the, uh, clean the switches with some contact stuff. And uh, yeah, Cal and operate. Interesting. I wonder what that does. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let me, let me look at these resistors. These are 0.1%. Yeah, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Yeah, they're all 0.1%. So whatever you set for the range, then everything else is going to be 0.1 off of that. Um, yeah, let's look at the data sheet and see what the absolute accuracy of this thing is. All right, I found three instruction manuals for this thing. Um, this one seems to be the latest version. Um, yeah, this one says 1983. So let's see if we can't find some specifications here. Where are the specs? Maybe in the back. Theory of operation, maintenance, replaceable parts. Yeah, very nice. Huh. Did I miss it? I must have missed it. Yeah, here it is. Right over here. Can you read that? Okay, so uh, output accuracy with 10 setting, uh, worst case. Okay, so quarter percent, half percent, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and worst case with other settings. So you call it, I guess, at this, and then everything else is based off those 0.1% resistors. That's why it gets a little worse over here. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, I would say it should be definitely within a, within a percent. Um, warm up time, one hour. All right. Resolution, three significant figures. Range resistor accuracy. Okay, we already looked at those. 0.1% uh, ah, but some of them are 0.02% in the uh, higher settings because everything else kind of falls down from there. And then 0.5% up in the 10 to the 12th range. Okay. Output isolation low to ground greater than 10 to the 9th ohm shunted by a 001 microfarad. Okay. Um, Interesting. Now, not all the manuals had good schematics. 
and I did find one that had an okay schematic. And I know you probably can't see that because it's just too faint. But there's a whole bunch of range switches, uh, resistive dividers, and then just a few things down, down over here. Uh, looks like a little differential amp on the output here. So it's just going to be balancing whatever you set this will, you know, probably some kind of current mirror type of thing or something. I need to go through it, but it looks super, 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 super simple. And uh, yeah, I don't see that can on the front, I think, doesn't have anything in it other than switches. I'm not sure. Maybe. Ah, here it is. Shield. Oops. Can you? Yeah, I can't do this on camera. So this is what's underneath the can. And it's just a bunch of resistors. So the last stuff with large resistors, 10 to the 12th ohm resistors and stuff. That might be interesting. It's hard to get to, though. I don't know if we'll be able to open that or not. I uh, don't think so. Not easily. So anyway, yeah, nice resistors in there. So let me figure out how to calibrate it and uh, see if we can't get it going better. Maybe I'll replace those capacitors too.